my reading glasses, but I'll do my best. Okay. <laughs> I'm actually going to paraphrase this one. Wouldn't it be really cool to have like five or six axis machines to print really strong structures that don't just print in a planer? What is it? A plane? Oh, maybe planer, yeah. It. Yeah, planer. And uh, print in like multiple levels in different directions to have a really cool print. And that's wicked strong. I thought that'd be cool. That does sound cool. Actually, I can't. I can't take credit for it. Uh, oh, I didn't attach their name. I will give credit somewhere for, to you. <laughs> ben will add a screenshot of it to this podcast. So if you're watching on YouTube, you can see who <laughs> left the comments and its full glory. There you go. Um, I do think that would be really cool. I know Stratasys has a demonstrator that does something very similar to that. I think they call it the Hydra, where it's a seven-axis 3D printer. Um, most 3D printers uh, 3D print just in layers, one on top of another, and this makes parts that aren't uniformly strong. It's a lot like the the grains in a piece of wood, right? And so it's stronger or weaker, depending on the direction that you apply the force. Um, but if you add more and more axes, in theory, you could draw lines in a way that eliminated that. I was going to say, how far is that from just being a robotic arm of the pen? Really, and just being like yeah. the pen. That no, that's basically two different it. Things. Yeah, basically yeah. it. It's, it's a robotic it arm that still prints on one plane at a time. Then it goes to the next layer. It just has a bigger print area. The pen that's not on a robotic arm, right? That's usually just handheld. And I think this person is talking about a robotic arm with an with extruder. Like, yeah, yeah, with, with an, an yeah. extruder hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the first I've seen that before um, mm -hmm. at a trade show in Chicago. Fanuc had a robot head with oh, a, really? an articulator on the end that did made their little logo in oh, plastic right. mm -hmm. and stuff at the demonstrator. But I guess yeah. it already exists. Yeah, I Pull would. Well, in some in some cases, I'm sure I would say that. it's just not very mainstream yet. Like I I don't know of any products that you would necessarily go to and just go buy off the shelf right now. Well, you're not you're not. You're not working from Cartesian coordinates to, to print something so you don't have something uniform. You'd have to have a robotics engineer who could program what you wanted it to do, which is yeah. probably the bigger challenge. I, or a CNC program. It'd be similar in nature to like five axis CNC. Yeah. I would say that the technology exists. It's just not super common yet. Yeah. I'd say uh, it's mostly at an experimental stage and probably the biggest hurdle to it becoming more mainstream is the slicing element, the programming, mm. the translating your model into instructions for the robot to follow. A lot of that software either doesn't exist today or it's experimental and difficult to use or it's super expensive. Um, and so we haven't seen the hardware become available because of the limitations of yeah. and there's available a, software. There's an added skill level, like when you think of CNC, to operate a three-axis CNC versus to operate mm -hmm. a five-axis CNC. So getting enough people trained to be able to operate that kind of system. Mm -hmm. What do you think the benefit is? Stronger parts. Um, More uniform. No support material. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you can just rotate the model and then print vertically again. Wow. Um, so right now all the printers in this room have a model material and a support material at a minimum. And so you can like eliminate that completely. Therefore, you eliminate some of the post-processing aspects of it. I mean, but that, if, that alone would save us a ton of time. If you've got <laughs> a stationary overhang, you need to print fill material to hold yes. that overhang up, but instead you would just... Rotate the part. Come up. Uh-huh. Yeah. Cool. I've seen a couple of demonstrations, um, including the, the Stratasys one, but I think like this commenter pointed out, it's not mainstream and it's something that we can look forward to eventually once kind of the software and hardware all all comes together uh the building blocks are there from cnc so it should be very possible cool yeah that's exciting i didn't know we we're as far along as you just told me yeah you're welcome i thought man. this was like way in the future <laughs> <laughs> no it's a it's a cool thing that we can look forward to um but instead of just looking forward to the the future uh kevin has our next segment oh. a throwback to uh to what we've been doing for